Hey guys, it's Gene. I am a corporate pilot, captain on the Pilatus PC-12 Legacy N and G models, and I'm here in the Coronado X-Plane 11 PC-12 on the ramp at Little Rock at Lynx FBO. And thought I'd make a quick video showing uh, you how to start the PC-12, and this also applies to really any turbine engine out there. They're all pretty similar in, in how they start. So uh, before I got to the engine start in the real airplane, I would have already performed a before start flow and checklist and also a starting engine flow and checklist, but just to make this video a little bit shorter today, I've already gotten everything set up, so we're ready to start the engine at this point. So I'll, uh, before I actually do it, because it happens pretty quickly, I'm just gonna explain uh, how this works and what we watch for during the start. So turbine engines are pretty simple. Really what we wanna do is just get airflow into the engine, and uh, once we have enough airflow, we will introduce fuel into the engine, and the igniters will uh, ignite the fuel air mixture and light the engine off and then the engine will spool up and it's running. Uh, so there are a couple of things we want to make sure we have enough airflow first of all otherwise we can get a hot start. And so uh, when we look at our gauges here we've got along the top we've got uh, the NG which is the uh, RPM of the engine. It's expressed in, in uh, a percentage of the maximum RPM that the, that the engine can turn. And then we have the ITT which is the interstage turbine temperature which is the temperature in the turbine section of the engine at the hottest part. And then over here is the torque. So this is how much torque the engine's producing. And then down below, we also have our prop in P, that's the RPM of the propeller. Uh, and then of course, uh, fuel quantity and fuel flow. And uh, down here on the lower right, we've got our oil system. So engine temperature and pressure. So we're gonna watch most of those gauges um, at some point here uh, during the start. We kind of have to watch a couple at once and uh, but primarily what we're doing first is, is I'm going to engage the starter in just a second using this button up here on the overhead panel. <clears throat> this is the, uh, the starter button, so I've got to press and hold that down for at least two seconds to engage the starter motor, which is electric. And uh, once the engine starts to turn, I'm going to first look outside to make sure the prop is turning. So when I see that the prop's turning, I'm going to look in here and make sure the oil pressure is rising. So it doesn't have to be in the green, it just has to be rising. And then after that, I'm gonna check my ATT. So my ATT needs to be below about 140 Celsius. Here you can see it's at 27 because this is the first flight of the day. The engine hasn't been running recently, so it's gonna be nice and cool. Uh, now on a quick turn or something where the airplane had just been flying, oftentimes that ITT will be above 140 and we'll have to motor it down, which means we'll let the starter motor run for a while and blow air through the engine to, to carry the heat away and get that temperature down to 140 before we introduce fuel and light the engine off. So. For this start, that won't be an issue, but we always double check. And then after that, I'm gonna watch the NG start to develop. And I'm gonna just let the starter motor bring the engine all the way up to maximum motor rotation. And that should be somewhere between 13 and 18% NG. And this end, this is the PT6A 67B on the uh, PC12 Legacy. So it has to be at least 13% to get enough airflow into the engine to safely light it off and not risk a hot start. Uh, but it, it can and, and probably will be a bit higher than that. So we just, we let the starter motor uh, turn the engine as fast as it can, so we'll let it, the, the NG stabilize at its maximum rotation and then make sure it's at least 13%. And uh, once we're there, we will introduce fuel and light the engine off. So to do that, we use this uh, con fuel condition lever down here, which is behind the PCL. And this has three different detents. Right now it's in feather cutoff. What I'll do is uh, when we start the engine is lift this up over the gate <coughs> and into the ground idle detent, which is behind where the PCL, the big black one is right now. And then as soon as I do that, I'm gonna look at my fuel flow right here. And the fuel flow should be right around 80 pounds per hour. And that's gonna let us know that the fuel control unit is working properly. It's introduced the correct amount of fuel into the engine to start the engine. If that fuel flow is abnormally high, that could be an indicator that we have a malfunction and could get a hot start. So that's a red flag. Now in the sim, this actually isn't modeled correctly. The fuel flow just builds gradually throughout the start and that's not accurate, it's not realistic how it works in the real airplane. Um, so we can't really check that in the sim, but that is something I'd look at in the real airplane. And then the most important thing we're watching during the start is the ITT gauge right here. So we're gonna watch the ITT build. And uh, we wanna make sure that first of all, it's not building too quickly. We don't wanna run away ITT. If the ITT is really skyrocketing very quickly, that could be a sign of a hot start. And we'd wanna just shut the engine down before we risk over temping and damaging the engine. So we'll just watch the ITT start to build. It should go fairly gradually. And in the 67B and P models in the PC-12, as uh, the fuel injectors start to inject fuel into the engine on a schedule, 
you'll actually notice that the ITT will uh, it'll build, it'll peak, it'll actually start to roll back, and then it'll build again, and then peak, and then come back down just a little bit and stabilize. And that's actually normal uh, in this in this engine. And then after a little bit of time, we'll start to see some torque develop as the prop starts turning out there and comes out of feather. And uh, we'll just let the engine stabilize. It should stabilize at 63% uh, NG is ground idle in this engine. And the sim, it's usually a little bit higher than that, which is fine. <clears throat> and then we'll make sure that our oil, oil pressure is coming up in the green. And uh, after that, we've got a successful start. And then we would bring our generators and avionics online, ECS, and move on with the rest of the after start flow. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so first step is look outside. We're going to check left, <coughs> forward, and right. Make sure there's nobody out there we're going to chop up with the prop. And then normally you'd have a ground marshal out there and you would spin your hand around and let him know you're going to start the engine. He would spin it back to let you know you're cleared to start. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll look up here and turn the beacon on. Let everybody know outside that we're going to uh, start the engine and turn the prop. And one thing we do before we start the engine is we check the battery voltage and we've got to have at least 24 volts on the starting battery to start the engine safely. If we have less than that, if, if we start on a weak battery, the starter motor isn't going to be able to necessarily turn the engine fast enough to get sufficient airflow into the engine to safely light it off. So you actually risk a hot start with a low battery. And the sim, you can see here, we've got 23.1 volts. I just turned the batteries on right before I started recording. This is not actually modeled accurately at all. It's not realistic. <clears throat> and the real airplane, uh, you would have well north of um, 24 volts after a, a recent flight with the you know the batteries topped off for quite some time with just minimal stuff turned on uh, the components that I have turned on so we're gonna have to pretend that this is at least 24 volts even though it's not in the sim we're just gonna do it anyway because there's no way around that in the sim so again uh, beacon on at least 24 volts and then we're gonna look down here <clears throat> and we've already cleared the area outside and it looks like we're ready to start so in the real airplane, I would have one hand up here on the uh, starter button, and then as soon as I pressed and held that and the starter motor engaged, I would just cover the starter interrupt uh, button right here, just in case there was a malfunction during the start and I needed to cut the starter out, I would press that button and it would, it would spool back down. Now once I introduce fuel into the engine, uh, so I lift, meaning I lift the condition lever up into ground idle, at that point, I can take my hand off that starter interrupt switch because the, the preferred method of shutting the engine down at that point will be to just take the con condition lever out of ground idle and back to feather cutoff. <clears throat> so the, the right hand will be on that, uh, basically having a hold of that the, throughout the entire start until the starter cuts out at about 50% NG and uh, in case there's a hot starter malfunction. And uh, at that point, I would just cut the engine back off and bring it back out of feather or to a feather cut off if there was a hot start or any other malfunction. So, all right, uh, without further ado, let's do it. So I'm going to come up here and hit our starter button for at least two seconds. Prop is turning. Oil pressure is alive. NG is building. ITT is low enough. So we're going to let the starter motor. There's at least 13%. So right now I could actually introduce fuel if I wanted to, but we're going to let it motor up. So it's actually going quite a bit higher than 18. And in the real airplane, it won't go much higher than 18. So that's about our max rotation. So now I'm going to bring the condition lever to ground idle. Fuel flow, we would check in the real airplane to make sure that was 80 pounds per hour. We're checking the ITT is coming up normally. So it looks like we have a nice, cool start here. <clears throat> and our NG is developing nicely. There's a little ITT rollback. And then up it goes again. Starter cut out at about 50% NG. ITT is looking good. It's rolling back. And we're stable at about 65% NG. And the ITT looks nice. Our prop RPM is coming up as it comes out of feather. Our oil pressure is in the green. And that torque in the real airplane would have already developed by now. In the sim, it takes a little longer, which isn't quite realistic. And there you go. And so we just want to make sure the starter did indeed cut out, which it did. <clears throat> and we can also look up here. This button will no longer say on. And of course, you would have a, a cause enunciator as well. Uh, if the starter motor failed to cut out, which I have had happen, not in a PC-12, but in a, a different airplane, a turboprop, uh, you would have to cut that out manually lest you burn up your starter motor. So there you go. That's a successful start. Um, one thing I didn't mention before the start was that we do want to watch the NG develop as well. 
during the start, just to make sure we don't have what's called a hung start. And a hung start means that the NG is developing, but it, it doesn't ever reach ground idle. So maybe it hangs up, let's say at 35% or 40% NG, and it just stays there and it never reaches the ground idle um, percentage. That can indicate that you've got a, obviously a malfunction on the engine. It could be an issue with uh, the fuel control unit. There could be stuff going on there that obviously you're not, you know, what we, what we wouldn't want to do at that point is um, is just bring the condition lever up to flight idle and, and see if we can get that, you know, NG to come up higher because we've obviously got a problem in the engine. We're not going to fly the airplane like that. That would be time to shut it down and let the maintenance guys know there's a problem with the airplane. Let them open up the cowling, look at the engine and see if they can figure it out and diagnose it. So, uh, but yeah, at this point, like I said, we turn on our generators, <coughs> avionics. And we would turn on our heating and cooling if uh, we needed that, turn our ECS to auto, bring our flaps down, and uh, move on with the rest of the after start flow, and then back that up with the checklist. So anyway, uh, you may have heard, uh, if you don't have much turbine experience, but you've kind of been around the airport, or you've heard you know, pilots talking about this kind of stuff, that you don't ever want to start a turbine engine with a tailwind. Uh, at least not a strong tailwind, and you know it's okay if you got a couple knots blowing on the tail. But um, the reason for that is because when you when you have a tailwind with a turbine engine, the engine is going to be windmilling the the opposite way. You don't want it windmilling. So the wind is actually going to be fighting against the starter motor, whether it's a, a smaller engine with an electric starter or a, a larger engine with a bleed air start system. In any event, your your starting system is trying to rotate the engine it's motoring it as fast as it can and if you have a strong tailwind that's blowing the engine the other way it's basically fighting that rotation so the engine won't be able to spin up as fast uh, as it would with you know a headwind or with no wind so typically there's a 10 knot uh, tailwind limitation on these things and if you've got a lot of tailwind and, and they you know the line guys bring you out of the hangar and they park you with the tailwind you want to actually have them uh, turn the airplane around into the wind to, to start the engine safely. It's just better on the engine. There's less of a chance of a hot start or any other problems. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's how you start a uh, turbine engine. And this applies to jets, turbofan engines, uh, pretty much the exact same. The only difference is instead of this being NG, this will be N2. And uh, you'll have an N1 gauge, which is the fan speed at the front of the engine. But the, the starting process works pretty much the exact same way. So hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, as always, uh, please consider subscribing, hit that like button, and uh, leave me your questions or, or comments down in the comments section. I love hearing from people, and uh, we'll see you back for another one soon. Thanks.